Hi everyone, welcome back to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa, I am The Crafty Author and welcome to my quilting studio. Today we are going to be doing something that is much needed in my sewing room. I used to use a tablecloth, if you'll remember, if you followed me for a long time, you'll remember when I did this. I used a tablecloth for my uh, quilt design wall. Well, now that I've moved into my new space, I don't really have a place for a quilt wall anymore because, well, I've managed to fill every wall up in this room. <laughs> so <clears throat> I am going to be showing you today how to make your very own DIY quilt wall, but it's gonna be a mobile quilt wall. So you can actually store it wherever you want to. So if you want it out of the way, you can always store it in a, in a storage area that you have, or you can store it behind a, a bookcase or whatever it is that you want to do. So all that this is, is uh, insulation. It's foam insulation. And I did get it at Lowe's. This is a four by eight. So what I did was I had them cut. You may have to, if you have a truck and you're gonna be doing this, then you can probably go ahead and keep your eight footer, but you'll need an X-Acto knife to cut it. You're gonna need packing tape. You're gonna need probably a full roll of packing tape. You're gonna need a lint roller and you are going to need some uh, flannel. We are going to get started with these boards. Now, I will show you what I do to mine so that you can see how um, I do put mine together. Because I did do mine a little differently. There's all kinds of tutorials on YouTube on how to do this. Um, I'm going to show you how I do it my way. And then you can try and do it your own way as well. All right, so I ran into a little snag before, and um, what happened was I realized that my fabric was not a wide enough piece to um, wrap around my board. So I'm gonna give you a little tip that's gonna save you any kind of trouble. So you, you can use the 42 inch wide fabric if you want to, but just know that you'll have to do two sections of it or you'll have to piece it. Um, what I went and did was I just went and bought 108 inch um, flannel backing. So that is what I am using to cut um, or to put on my, my quilt board. So you're gonna need about two and a half yards of fabric. And so because I'm making two of them, I purchased five yards of this, this flannel. And I'm just measuring this out here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use this whole piece because that's, that's the end of it. Now, I do wanna tell you that you're gonna have extra. You're gonna have a lot of extra on the sides but it's going to save you such a headache from having to piece it and then try to figure it out and all that. So 
<clears throat> and you're still going to end up with lots of extra fabric. So here, I'm just going to use this 108 inch by 108 inch, or 108 inches by two and a half yards. So what I will do is I'm going to lay this down. The board is going to go down on here first. And this is a four by six. Lay that there. And then I am going to fit this on top. Now, because I'm doing this by myself, it gets a little crazy and a little tedious. So I'm gonna use pins because we can stick pins in this foam board. And so I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so you can see that I've got this all on my board now. Now I need to go around and I need to trim all of the excess off. I am just going to go around and you'll see here that I have a lot that I need to trim down. All right, so now I'm gonna pull this off of here and I'm gonna press it because you can see that it has a lot of different um, uh, wrinkling going on in here. going to go ahead and put this back on top of our board. So your sides are even. So you just want to make sure that your sides are even, that you're going to have enough to tape on every side. All right, now the fun part. So it's easiest if you start on one side first. And so I'm gonna start down here and I am going to pull this underneath. I'm just gonna tuck it underneath and I'm gonna use straight pins and I'm going to poke it just straight up like that. I'm going to do that all along this bottom edge here.
Okay, here's the moment of truth. Here is the back of it. It's all been put together. Now I'm just going to flip this up. And look at that. Turned out amazing. It is awesome. And now we have a quilt wall. So I made two of them. And the reason I did this was because I like to make really large quilts. Now you could see that I could put like a king size quilt on here if I wanted to. So this is a really nice inexpensive way to um, make yourself a quilt wall. What I love most about this is that it is movable. So you can actually store this like in your storage room or you can store it against a wall or you can have it open out or you can do it like this along shelving like I have. If I wanted to cover the shelving, I could do it like this leave that open. There's a lot of different things that you can do with it and I really, really love it. So the other thing that's nice about these is that you can, it sticks automatically because it's flannel, but because it is also foam, if you feel like your blocks are going to fall, you can just pin them like that and then, you know, you're good to go that way too. So the other nice part is that if you decide you don't want to use white anymore and let's say you wanted to change it out for black it's just tape and the tape is actually holding it you want to use a good packing tape to do this because it is holding fabric but you could always just take this off or you could take it off and wash it and then put it back on so i mean it gives you a lot of choices now you don't have to make two of them like i did like i said make one. I think this project cost me close to, I think, 50 bucks, and that was for the fabric and the uh, board. I already had the tape, so if you don't have the tape, you'll want to factor that cost in there too. You can see that I have our um, blocks on there from our sew along that we've been doing, so have those up there. And they look so cute. I love being able to see them. And I went ahead and I made a little mini board also. Let me pull that out. So I made this mini board. And I am putting the backing, like some of the backing squares that I have that I've made for our quilt. And I have those displayed here. So these are on the, the black background. You can probably see my dog's hair on there too, but that's, that's gonna happen here. So um, anyway, so yeah, so these are blocks that I've made for our backing already, and these are the ones that are gonna go on the front. And so I just wanted to show you how that looks and how, I, how wonderful it is. Um, I used to have a tablecloth, if you'll remember, that I used to hang on the wall and I used to put my stuff up there. I love this so much more because I can actually extend it out and I don't have to run out of room anymore because it's all there in one piece. So, I really, really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Feel free to share because sharing is caring. And also don't forget to click the little bell. You'll get notified each and every time that I upload an awesomely cool new video and keep on crafting. The links will be down below in the description box where you can get these items. And that's it for me today. I hope you all have a wonderful Easter for those of you that celebrate. And if you don't, I hope you have a wonderful weekend as well. Bye-bye.